back in 2015, thereabouts, I'd written a bit of JavaScript to build a sort of table of contents set of links at the side of my blog post. Didn't want it wasn't something I wanted to do by hand, so it was a little bit of JavaScript that would go through the the blog post, find all the H1 and H2 tags, and build a menu at the side that let you quickly jump through those different bits. I came back to this code a few weeks ago, sort of six years later, and realized that nowadays, thanks to a few extra features that are now common in browsers, I could make a much better job, a much simpler job, of creating one of these table of contents menu systems. So I thought it would be interesting to look at that um, and show you the differences between the two. So I've got the two files here in Sublime. Over on the left is the, the 2015-ish version. And over on the right is the one that I've amended for, you know, the more recent one. So let's look at the, the older version first. You can see that the first thing that I've got that I no longer need is I've got a, a polyfill in for the scope part of Query Selector. If you're not fam familiar with what the scope does, you, you can see over here where I'm selecting all the, the H1 and H2 tags. I've got this scope colon bit in here, so I'm saying you know, every H1 and H2 that's inside scope, what scope means is it's the scope of the thing that the query selector is running on. So in this case, the wrapping element, you can see the wrapping element here is the post content, which is the, it's just the DOM element that wraps the posts on my particular setup. That's in all browsers now, so that's something I no longer need. The sort of layman's terms way that the, the table of contents worked in the past is not, not only did I want this table of contents to to list on the side all the different sections of the blog post. As the user scrolled, I wanted to highlight the section that they're reading at the minute so they can see where they are in the document, how much more they've got to suffer, and they can get back to different sections if they want to. Um, and the way that that worked was that on when the, the page loaded, I was looking at all the H1 and H2 tags, making a record of where they were with um, bounding client box, recording where they were on the page, and then I had a listener on scroll, which, as you probably, as you would no doubt know, if you put a listener on the scroll um, event, it fires a lot of time. So the other thing that I needed was, you can see down here, I've got a, a debounce filter so that I could pass the scroll event debounce function and stop it firing so rapidly. And then what would happen is on the scroll, it would see whereabouts the, the user was on the page at that point see where it was against this array of H1 and H2 positions and choose the appropriate one to stick a, a current class against and with the current class that's how I would excuse me that's how I would highlight that particular section in the table of contents on the right. I'm not going to go by this line by line but you can you can see here we've got here this this function here create table of contents is just creating the, the DOM that subsequently goes in the page at the beginning. And then we were creating a map of the positions. The measure and check function was for when the scroll event happened and it would check where it was and write the appropriate thing in. And then you can see we got all these extra listeners for, for resize, scrolls I've mentioned and hash change as well in case when you clicked it changed the hash of the, the menu itself. Didn't explain that very well. What I mean is when you click one of the things in the table of contents, it's gonna change the hash in the URL and that in turn means that you've scrolled to a different position. So at that point, you would have to go and measure everything again to see where you were. And then just at the bottom there, you can see there's just a um, an iffy, a, a function to kick things off at the bottom of the file. So come in there, no real comments in there, but it's about 125 lines of code. The new version that we've got, which not only performs better, a lot simpler, to reason about and write and comes in with comments about 68 lines. The best sort of new feature of this is I'm using I'm using intersection observers, which if you're not familiar with those, they're in every sort of modern browser now. There's no problem with support. But what they do is they give you something, instead of having to listen for scroll events, it knows when a piece of DOM intersects either with another or with the viewport itself. And it does this very efficiently. It's very close to the metal. So you're not suffering the sort of performance problems that you typically get when you're doing um, scroll listeners. If we go through 
the right hand side which is the new code a little bit more line in line the only thing up at this, the, the first section there to be aware of is this um, wrapping element that's where I'm saying go and get me the DOM element that wraps the blog post the thing that I've got to kick things off at the bottom is very similar to before so it's a little simpler because I'm not using this sort of object uh, functions in a in an object pattern I'm just basically going if I've got a wrapping element i.e. It's, it's not equal to null so it exists then go ahead and and kick this function off back up at the top there the, the first thing of note is the the options which we're going to pass into the intersection observer but we'll come back to that in a second this is the the function that is get gets attached to each one of our h1 and h2 tags and actually creates an intersection observer for each of them and then we've got here this is very similar to how it was before this is basically just creating the dom for each of the so for each h1 tag h2 tag that we've got on the blog post we want to make a link to that using the same uh, linking to the id and sticking it in this sort of side section so that's all that's doing is creating a, a nav element sticking those a tags in linking them up so they they are anchor links to the the h1 and h2s on the page this just adds that into the dom and then right at the end of there i've got this loop which goes over all the h tags and then fires off this function that we looked at before this observe h tags which is our thing up here so you can see here that this is firing off an intersection observer and each time that thing fires if you like it's going to run the set current function and it's doing that against this set of options here which is our little object here with intersection observers they can tell you as many times as you like how much of that element has passed the thing that you're measuring it against in my instance I'm measuring it against uh, the viewport itself and what I'm saying is I only care this threshold key and value the threshold is I, I only want to know I only want it to tell me when the whole thing is visible because the h1 and h2 tags are, are very small anyway because it's just the actual heading section I only really need to know when it's fully in view but if you were dealing with something like images if you were trying to if you were using this to, to lazy load images and the like you might choose for example to to load them when just a little bit of that is showing or you might use the the root margin so that they, they actually start loading in before you even get them visible in the viewport so they're ready for when the user scrolls to that area so very simple for my use case I only cared when they were fully in the view and didn't need to do anything fancy with the root margin either so that's the options that I'm passing in with every single one of these intersection observers which is attached to each one of these h1 and h2 tags and then very simple way of switching these things on and off depending on where you are so the set current takes that intersection observer event which gets fired every time it intersects the viewport and we're saying first of all go and get me all of those links that we made in the right hand side parks those up there in that all selection links part there and then we're going to loop over the intersection observer now the intersection observer is is typically an array of events so what I'm doing there is I'm saying map over each one of those things rather than just you know trying to call it directly so mapping over them and I'm saying if if one of these is intersecting it's equal to true then all those links I'm gonna first of all I want to take off any current class on any of them so just wipe it all clean to begin with and then I'm saying if the a tag matches the same as the intersection observer ID ie the h tag matches the link to it in the side then make that current and that is essentially it and we can see this here as we scroll down you can see as we pass through each of these sections we can jump down to one we can jump back and it just takes care of itself much simpler a lot easier to reason about less code to write and probably most importantly I think it works better than the version I had before which was probably more my fault than anything else um, but if you've not used intersection observers before can't recommend them highly enough for this sort of stuff as usual if you've got any queries then pop me a comment in the box you can get you can send me a tweet at Ben Frain on Twitter 
or email me from my site, which is benfrain.com. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.